two biggest amplifiers on the potential of mankind are the ability to work in groups and the ability to create and access knowledge. These are the two key features that took us from the Wright brothers to landing on the moon in about 70 years. Indeed, it's arguably the prime difference between modern civilizations and those of a few hundred years ago. Further, given the ability to spread knowledge, it's a badge of shame for mankind that I can pick up a portable electronic device that would have put Star Trek of only 20 years ago to shame. Burned Witchcraft 2012. And use it to see that there are still parts of this world where people are burnt for being witches. And it's this ability to access knowledge that has been most affected by the internet age. And given what it's done for society of late, doubtless this will continue to play a dominant role in how our civilization changes over the coming decades. This is particularly relevant for the key aspects of information flow in our society. And that's delivering knowledge to the next generation or, well, education and the discovery and publication of new knowledge. That's scientific research. In the internet age, the metadata can be as important as the actual data itself. Now, arguably, this has always been true, which is why books have had indexes and libraries have had card catalogs and hard disks had file allocation tables. It's not that the data doesn't exist without that metadata. It's just that your ability to access it is increased by orders of magnitude by that metadata. However, as the amount of data available to mankind has skyrocketed, the ability to find data has become an increasingly more important aspect of its value. The most obvious example of this is that, to a good first degree approximation, if information doesn't appear in the internet search engines, it doesn't exist. The total value of a scientific researcher's discovery is a product of its inherent value, practical application, or enhancing our understanding and the metadata associated with it. Put simply, in a vast sea of information, if your discovery is hard to find, it will have a diminished impact. And given how important this metadata is, it's amazing just how many blank stares you get when you talk to scientists about it. And they're the ones who are creating this new knowledge. Now, traditionally, the scientific community has been about five years behind the trailblazers in embracing the new information accessibility features that cyberspace offers, and the educational community even further behind that. Some notable examples is just how long it took scientific databases to get decent, user-friendly search engines, such as the things that you now get on SciFinder and Web of Science. Even though things like Google have been doing this for years, or how long physical paper submissions persisted into the digital age. And only now a scientific journal starting to pick up on some of the more popular elements that have been available elsewhere on the web for years. For instance, the ability to leave a comment on a paper or to link it to social media or even to use targeted adverts as a revenue stream. However, in many ways, the most obvious thing that the scientific literature has not embraced is new media. Previously, journals were technologically bound to publish papers by spraying ink onto parchment made from mashed up trees. This is just not true in the realm of cyber publishing, a fact that journals have been slow to wake up to. There is no need to limit figures to something that could be sprayed onto paper when you can simply embed a three-dimensional crystal structure using something like JavaScript. And while the academic community has been very reluctant to break from the traditions in terms of publishing work in a permanent hard copy paper, this format does, in many ways, have some inherent drawbacks that really don't occur in other forms of cyber publishing. I mean, as a recent example, I seem to have caught the American Chemical Society out completely when I recently submitted a video summary of one of my more recent papers even though YouTube had been able to seemingly handle this stuff for almost a decade. It's my opinion that skills such as these will become increasingly more important in the scientific and educational media, that these will be vital skills for the next generation. That is, in the information age, success in both the scientific and educational media producing forums will be significantly mediated by those producers who have recognized that there is 
a competitive attention economy out there. Irrespective of whether it's the scientific community, the educational arena, or even the popular forum. And the impact of the work will consist of the ability to convey concepts and how many people get to see it. And with more people understanding more stuff, and that the potential of mankind is essentially dictated by how much collective knowledge we have, I forget that's going to make the world a better place.